fires a drive into left center field. That ball is going to be out of here. It's gone. It's 7-15. There's a new home run champion of all time, and it's Henry Aaron. Today, I consider myself the luckiest man on the face of the earth. Gibson swings and a fly ball to deep right field. This is going to be a home run. Corks one into right down the line. It may go. Go crazy, folks. Go crazy. It's a home run, and the Cardinals have won the game. Little roller up along first. Behind the bag. It gets through Buckner. Here comes Knight, and the Mets win it. This is WHPC Sports Talk on the voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC. Oh, yeah, baby. You know what time it is. 4.02 p.m. Welcome to WHPC Sports Talk. I am your host, Michael Merlo, along with Matt Leonard, Ross Levine, Joshua Imahi, and Elijah Blaine. You know this music playing. The intro was absolutely fantastic. As we know, baseball is back. Very, very excited. My first show since baseball is back, and I can't tell you... How much my mood has changed. I'm in such oh, yeah. a better mood. But, guys, how are you guys doing? Baseball being back. The, I, I hosted the day the lockout ended, right? We got the news about 3.30 p.m. I ask Elijah. I was so fired up that day. I was screaming. I was, oh, oh man, that, that was like Christmas. That was amazing. It really was like Christmas Day. A regular Thursday afternoon, you got the tweet from Jeff Passan after he got hacked all day <laughs> all day long. He was hacked by. I don't even know what he was hacked by, but they get a deal done. And now other deals are being done in Major League Baseball. We're going to have to put that on hold, though, because there's so much news going on in the NFL today. Because some old man came out of retirement. Some old man decided to say, you know what? Retirement's not for me. 40 <laughs> days later, Tom Brady is back with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He is back to terrorizing NFL defenses, specifically NFC defenses, as the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who are probably the happiest organization on this <laughs> planet, <sighs> that their Super Bowl champion quarterback is back. Well... Especially you, Josh. You yeah. This is a start with Josh. Josh is getting okay, it all out. Okay, so... <laughs> Given, I guess the only thing that surprised me about this was the timing. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't know. Just as the old man that he is, <laughs> maybe you want to skip OTAs, maybe come back a little later. But I think you guys alluded to it earlier. There was always like a sense that he was going to do this. Like he, once he retired and all the interviews he was given, I think he went on a podcast with Jim Gray, and then he his had podcast an, with Jim Gray. Him, his podcast, and you could just sense it, like. There was still some indecision. He was never somebody that seemed like he was fully into it. Mm-hmm. You know, and now he's back. He was playing at such a high level, and they didn't win the champ. They didn't win the Super Bowl. So if you told me the Tim Bay Buccaneers won the Super Bowl last year and he went out on top, I would say, okay, that makes a little more sense. Right. I would believe retirement a little bit more. But at this point, I, you know, it was kind of tough to believe. The thing that I was confused about was the again the timing, how short it was, forty day retirement. Yeah. And I didn't think he would. I I was under the belief that he was not going back to Tampa Bay. Yeah, uh, if he retired, unretired, I thought he was going to go to only one team, San Francisco. Right. Yep. It was his dream situation. He grew up a Niners fan. He watched Joe Man- Montana. Why do play all these guys the want to go there? Him, uh, Rogers. Why? Because they're all so attractive. From there. And it's a classic, classy um, franchise, really. Yeah. I mean... It's a very historic franchise, yeah. there's no doubt about it. I just personally hate them, but that's my own issues. <laughs> well, they beat your team, so yes. you, yeah. you yes. just like them. <laughs> but Brady is back, and and they are going to be the... Listen, they're going to be the favorite, I think, in the NFC when we you know get to that time, you know, closer to the season. Right now, uh, Green Bay is the favorite. Um, I think they're plus 750 to win the whole thing. Where's Dallas. They're plus 1,200 or 1,400, like 7th or 8th. 
So, I mean, they're, they're still pretty good odds there. They're definitely in the top ten. I know Green Bay was slightly ahead of the uh, – I mean, yes, they were slightly ahead of Tampa Bay. I think that's going to change, in my in my opinion. Mm-hmm. But, um, they're, listen, they're the fa- – I think right now they should be the favorites. I think they're the best team in the NFC – with Brady back, you know, again, you know, they have Evans. They still have Godwin. It's not like they lost these guys over um, Los Angeles. Yeah. Now I understand that Aaron Donald thing is yes. kind of like holding that up, but no, I, even with Donald, I'd still say they're they're better. That they they're, they're going to beat them. I just wonder because obviously the Aaron Donald thing is still up in the air, but. Tom Brady, the Buccaneers just lost their two top offensive, yeah, interior offensive linemen. They got, yes. so. they got Jensen back, but they got rid of the guard. They one. lost Alex Kappa, yeah, and Kappa. I believe, um, what's his name? Marpet yeah. retired. Marpet retired. retired. Yeah, yeah Marpet retired. So they look, listen, they got work to do, right? They this free agency class, which you know news has been breaking all day long. You've had a very um, strong interior offensive lineman class. You've also had you have a draft class that is full of them interior offensive linemen. So the Bucks are going to have to reload. That's it. They're going to reload. I mean, this team will reload. They have smart people running the organization, and I don't think they are going to let Tom Brady go into a situation. And Tom Brady's not going to let them put him into a situation that's not good when it comes to the offensive line. It's not going to not be figured out. Also, yeah, we didn't mention that Gronk is probably back too with uh, right. the Buccaneers. So yeah, the butt buddies. I mean, <laughs> what? Think, the butt buddies? What did you say? Butt buddies. Okay. Buck buddies. I but heard. I heard buddies. something else. No, no, he, he said it. I, I said he it. said it. That's who right. you are. You should have just said buck buddies. But I think he said buck buddies. That'd be funnier. Why would that be funnier? Because it implies the other one. Because it would have been like a play on words. Yeah, yeah. Nice Nonetheless, that's what they are. I mean, okay. they're just they're two peas in a pod. Yeah. I love that friendship. I, I do it. too. I I'm all it. I'm all for it. But do you think like the Gronk thing? If Tom Brady stayed retired, like would he retire with him? Would he go somewhere else? Would he go to Buffalo? I had no clue what he was going to do, honestly, because it, it, there was no news about it. You had heard, you know, he had said I think on a podcast or something that he was intrigued by. Cincinnati and mm-hmm. Joe Burrow, but right. nothing was, you know, nothing was serious. There were no, oh, he's interested in going here. This team is going to offer him this. So I don't know if he would have went right back to Tampa Bay. I think, you know, I think it's obvious now he's right. going to go back to Tampa Bay. Yeah, I mean, you can call me a hater, but the <laughs> one thing about Tampa Bay that I do not like, and I saw in the divisional game, their offensive line has taken a step back. In my opinion, Whoa. and I don't think Tom Brady gets out the ball as quick as he used to, even like two years ago. So well, that's actually, my biggest. You have to remember, Worf's had a bad injury, yeah. and tried to play through it, yeah. And I think Jensen was also injured in that game as well. Mm-hmm. So they were dealing with injuries up front, you know, throughout that game, you know, throughout the playoffs. So I'm going to give him a pass on that one. I don't. Th- I think the offensive line is fine. They did lose guys now, so they're going to have to replace them. But I wouldn't say they're in a bad situation as of today. I wouldn't say they're in a bad situation at all. I just don't think they're going to be on the level as the Rams and the Packers. Even even the Packers, they're going to lose some guys, but I think Aaron Rodgers is going to um, play at a really high level next year. I think the Packers, they're not going to lose as many guys as you think. I hope Devontae Adam gets re-signed because what some it of the, receivers, like what some of the receivers are yeah. getting now, I don't know what he's going to ask for. He's going to be entitled to ask for that. Christian Kirk got four years, $84 That's what I'm million to. Dollars from the Jacksonville Jaguars. I think it like incentives puts it up $12 million, so I think it's really four years, $72 million. Ooh. For who? Christian, Christian Kirk. Kirk. Yeah, Christian what? Kirk. What? $18 million a year. $18 what? million a year for a Christian Kirk, an undersized receiver, who is a talented guy. Oh, no. But yeah. $18 million? Oh, uh, oh my God. Devontae Adams thought- is worth two times that then. If I was he a, might be worth more. Yeah. If I was Devontae Adams, I'd just print that report out, He's, give it to the Packers front office. Him and his agent are like, just They do better than this. Yeah. <laughs> do a lot better than this. Double this for me because that's what he deserves. 36 I, million? Oh, man. No, no way. They're, they're desperate, I think. He'll get paid over 20. He'll be the highest paid receiver of all time. But I don't know what he'll do with the Packers because he's not playing on the franchise tag. Yeah. Christian Kirk screwed the Packers. What happened? He Listen, they're going to... They're going to figure that out. They'll yeah. figure out Devontae Adams. Aaron Rodgers will make sure they – listen, when you when you have guys like Tom Brady on your team and Aaron Rodgers on your team, and now that Aaron Rodgers has this great relationship with the front office, Suddenly. things 
things happen. Okay, and and money moves very quickly in different in different situations. We know the cap is is, is all you know. It's all fake numbers when it comes mm-hmm. to the NFL. You can move this, you can move this, you can turn this into a signing bonus, and this isn't toward oh, the yeah. cap. My team puts on a clinic <laughs> yeah. every offseason. It's the baby. stupidest thing I've seen in my entire <laughs> life. So and somehow and somehow, Josh, your team's seventy million dollars over the cap, and you're looking at Deshaun Watson who's making thirty, <laughs> and the Giants are having a yeah, hard time they can't just cutting sign anyone. Forty million dollars and can't sign everybody. Anybody. So it is really funny how, how those things are. Um, for the most part, the Giants have really kept quiet today. We're going to get in the local teams mm-hmm. in just a minute. The Giants have kept quiet. Listen, they don't have you know much money to spend, and you're going to see trades, and you're going to see small signings here and there, and um, cuts. But other than that, the Giants are going to stay quiet. The Jets made a move today. Two moves today. They signed guard Lincoln Tomlin. Tomlinson from uh, the San Francisco 49ers, a guard, good three move. years, $41 million. Um, that is a very good move. This guy, knock on wood, Jeff Fans, has been very healthy and played very well. This Jets offensive line is turning into something that you know I think fans can be excited about because last year, toward the end, they started to play well as a unit. And they've improved. Guys are getting healthier. Hopefully, Makai Becton comes back, and guys are getting just more experience. So this should be a really nice move for the Jets, and, and hopefully, give uh, Zach Wilson some time to throw. Yeah, and, and also he knows this, the system as well. Yes, I mean, knowing mm-hmm. Michael Floor pretty well. And look, I, I really do think Wilson's going to take us a leap, a little bit of a leap. Not a, I don't know about a huge leap, but a little bit of a leap. And it, look at. I think he got more comfortable at the end of last year, so you got to hope that he keeps the turnovers down and he just puts it be like twenty five touchdowns is fine. I I think the Jets are going to be better than people think this year, but not their next year. Tough. Their schedule is tough. I think they're going to finish third in the division. I hope the Jets are, and then I said this last time. I hope this isn't just one of those things where every four years we get excited about the Jets. You know, hopefully for Jeff fans, this is something where you get sustained success. You know, you have the head coach, maybe you have the quarterback, and if you have the general manager and he's drafting well, then yeah, you're gonna, you're going to hit on a lot of these things. Uh, it looks like the Jets are moving in the right direction. I, I can't disagree with you there, Ross. This is um, should be a fun. I think it'll be an interesting year for the Jets, Elijah. I don't know if they're going to be record wise better than you know people think. But I think on the field, like again, if Wilson's playing better and you know you see improvements overall, but maybe they're not winning games because their schedule's tough. Right, that could also be a win. It's a, it's also. I think you're going to see more competitive games. In the yeah, Jets. I mean, you you would like to think you would at, see that. At you the hope end of the so. season, though, they did. They did at the end of the season. They just against, do that every year. But it was against Tom Brady. Yeah, they almost though. beat the Bucks. Yeah, that's yeah. different. That's different. They <laughs> played tough. Uh, Wilson didn't throw any interceptions in what, the last five games of the year. Yeah. Yeah. The defense looked better too. Yeah, it was and that yeah, game. Nobody the on that defense put into the year. Nobody was there, and that's yeah. where they really got to start. Spe- maybe start se- spending some money, or maybe not spending money because you don't want to, you know, just waste it on in, in a season where you're not going to be good. I, I think a lot of these draft resources, and as we get closer to the draft, I think we'll get more into this. And we and we spoke about it a little bit as well. This draft is most likely going to be a lot of defensive players, yeah. especially um, in that first round. It's going to have yeah. to be and with the way this defense is played. There's one guy I'm looking at for the Jets right now. They would be thrilled if they got him, uh, Thibodeau from uh, Oregon. That's yep. like that's the guy for me for the Jets. Really, that's the ideal situation for them. You hope he doesn't get taken before that. He could be taken before them. Yeah, Sauce Gardner, I think, will be there at the Jets pick, regardless of if Thibodeau is there or not. I think that would be a good at pick four. for the Jets. Yeah, I think he'll be there at four no matter yeah, what. Yeah, he's getting a, he's rising up a lot of boards right now. I so. think he'll be at four no matter what. Yeah, if Thibodeau goes or not, Hutchinson and Thibodeau are going to go over Gardner, and then someone's going to reach for an offensive lineman or something. Yeah, I don't think they're getting offensive line in the draft. I don't think they, they, don't, they don't need it right now. Yeah, they don't. They fixed this offensive line. The mm-hmm. interior offensive line looks good now with this signing. It's a deep draft, like I said, for interior offensive linemen. So if you can grab a couple more, grab one more in the draft. You have George Fan, who played well at left tackle last year. You're going to have Mekhi Becton coming back. The Jets have done a good job here, you know, sort of rebuilding this offensive line in the last couple of years under Joe Douglas. Um, very quickly, Amari Cooper was traded to the Cleveland Browns for a fifth and a sixth round pick. <laughs> That's a joke. Jarvis Landry was released by the Browns today. Um, Rams. I-, I think it's a good move. What? Rams. You think so? Calling it now, Rams. No. Him and OBJ are going to reunite over there. They can't afford it. Yeah. 
There's no way they. Him and Odell Beckham are gonna go somewhere together. There's too much. There's too much. Um, of a. What's the name? Log jam at a uh, wide receiver. Yeah, that too. Right now, yeah. You got Cup. You got uh, Bobby Trees, and you got <laughs> yeah. Bobby Trees. And you got Odell. They <laughs> want Odell back. Van Jefferson too. And who Van was Jefferson. Awful in the Super Bowl. Oh yeah. my God, he was brutal in the Super Bowl. That's not his fault. No, he was. Brutal. It's not his fault. But how is it, was, it not his fault? He was fault? not great. I mean, he, he was the third, sometimes fourth option on the field. Like, what do you want him to do in the Super Bowl? Yeah, he became the second option. Yeah, he had he, he, second that's true. Option. Odell got hurt, but I'm saying to start that first half of that game and the. Th- and the third option on, on a team like that is not that bad. Yeah, that's true. He, I mean, he, he should have had two, opportunities two, two down. Two wide receivers. Come, Come on. on. He was one-on-one the whole time, too. Like, yeah. You got to win some one-on-ones, bro. Oh, my God. I just it's Eli Apple. <laughs> some, <laughs> my guy. Some people Enjoy had to run yards in that Super Bowl, Van. Yeah. And you and you were happy because you won a Super Bowl and had a baby. I was not. Yeah. Well, Dell got a baby. Look, he played well. Yeah, but Odell got hurt, yeah. and he cost me a few hundred dollars still. <laughs> if he didn't get hurt, I would have won a lot. He, he caught the, the, the touchdown that I needed, but unfortunately Joe Mixon didn't score. But let's not get into that. We don't have to go back. No, to no, no, no. Ball. <laughs> I think for the Cowboys, listen, they just re-signed Michael Gallup as well, and that that news got lost completely You know, in the Tom Brady news because yeah. that happened, and then Gallup signs five years, $62.5 million with the Cowboys, and then – the tweet of Brady comes out, so people forgot about Michael Gallup, but he's back with the Cowboys. That Gallup news was weird to me because you trade Amari Cooper, and you're thinking, okay, we're going to allocate more money from the salary cap away from the receivers. Maybe we can find one in a wide receiver heavy draft class, and then you give Gallup sixty two million. <laughs> I, really? I knew I, I had a feeling that was happening, and I think it's a great move because first mm. off, I'm not a huge fan of of. Amari Cooper. He's inconsistent. He gets hurt a lot, he, and he's worth, I mean, $20 million for that guy. I mean, it looked like it was going to be a great contract, you know, especially after that, you know, the first two seasons he had there, but it's been rough the last couple. The Jets were in on it. They were actually yeah. discussing it, but they, I think they, they backed out because of the price. And, and that was a smart move, no matter what they were giving up. $20 million for an aging receiver who's, you know, yeah. not always healthy. That's not worth it to me, and I thought the Jets not being in that, you know, was was a really good thing for them. But did you see what AJ Brown called Amari Cooper? No, what he said. One of the best route runners in the NFL. He is. He, really? You think so? He he's is really good. A very good route runner. I don't know if you've ever watched videos of him. He's fantastic. Are you saying like a Devon Adams type route runner, or like he runs the route when he's like you know down the field? He, I don't know what you mean by that. Just like the release off the line, or you're saying down the field and make guys miss? At, just in general, like whatever route he's supposed to run, he's great at running routes. All right, he's I'll say he's very top, crisp. He's, top ten. I, that's everything you know. I've mm. I've seen and heard. I used to watch videos on it. But the thing is that he's I'm going. Thinking, Go ahead, Lyle. Sorry. Yeah, he's going to a wide receiver wasteland in Cleveland, so <laughs> it's not going to matter. At home with Baker Mayfield. Well, I'm yeah. sure he's not happy about this, <laughs> yeah. but he had no choice. I mean, I'm sure he would have loved to got have gotten released, Yeah, and then he could choose wherever he was going, but he didn't. He didn't have that option. So Amore Cooper is a Brown. He can go deal with Baker Mayfield for a couple of years. He's still being paid, though. And for the Cowboys, again, I think Gallup is a better receiver overall. I think he's a more talented receiver. I think it's a good move. And now you got your two receivers uh, with um, CeeDee Lamb and Michael Gallup. I, I like that a lot I mean, for them. They had to get rid of Amari Cooper because they're paying an RB2 a lot of money right now. So yeah. That's the yeah. thing. Yeah. Like, the Zeke contract is just... They would be a Super, <sighs> te- a Super Bowl team without the Zeke contract, in my opinion. It depends on what you're adding. Like, okay, yeah, you could take you, that money. They would add other if you players. Use it right. You, if you, you could take right. that yeah, money away, right. but you could spend the money too. You know, just because yeah. you have money doesn't mean you're going to automatically win. And I agree with you. If they spent it on the right, you know, positions and needs, mm-hmm. then sure. But there's no guarantee they would do that. And it's the Cowboys. Who knows what Jerry's going to do over there? Yeah. Uh, you guys mentioned before the show, Mitch Trubisky is signing with the Pittsburgh <laughs> wow. Steelers. He is going to be, I think, their starting quarterback. This is just so deal. funny. I, I like it. I he, couldn't. Sorry to cut you off, Mike. Yeah, no, you're good. I couldn't find, because he signed a two-year deal, but nobody is saying like how much it was worth. Yeah, I can't find and that either. That's really what interests that's me sus. for this deal. Like, Honestly, that is a little bit. Yeah. He chose between know. the Giants, apparently. And uh, he went uh, to Pittsburgh because he'd have more of an opportunity to That's start a good choice right there. And that, I guess if you're looking to start, 
then yeah, that was the right move. I don't think he's going to start with the Giants. But the Giants were very interested in him. They wanted him uh-huh. big time to come in and compete with Daniel Jones for the starting job. Uh, he has a relationship with Brian Dayball, so that's kind of why it made sense. But um, that's what's happening there. Trubisky to the Steelers, and it, it looked like possibly the Steelers were interested in one of these big-time quarterbacks. I know they were interested in Rodgers. They looked in on Wilson. I thought Garoppolo was going there for sure. Garoppolo, that would have made sense. I really thought he was going there. They were interested in yeah. Garoppolo, but they, now this they, takes they, him out. He goes to Indy now? They could still draft a quarterback, Pittsburgh. They yeah, that's, stop yeah that's what they I'm might. saying. They shouldn't stop them. And there's no pressure now to draft one and, and have yeah. it mm-hmm. start right away. If they do like one of these quarterbacks in their yeah. pick, they can take them. They are late in the uh, first round. Like though. a corral, a, um, what's his name, Sam Howell? Yeah. I mean, I I, I, I'm not in love with Sam Howell. Corral I like. Don't reach. They're not going to, but don't reach just to take a quarterback. Yeah. Yeah, if I was the Steelers, I would still take one round one. If Malik yeah. Willis is there, maybe. He won't, I think be, there. He won't be there. Malik Willis, mm. Willis looks like he's going to be a top 10 pick. That's yeah. true. I mean, where are they picking? The, the 11. 11. Like, 11. Who? The Steelers. It's not 11. Pittsburgh? No, they made the playoffs. Yeah, oh, no. they're way out So they're in the 20s. 20s. Yeah. yeah. Oh, they're 20. Then who's 11? Malik Willis will be gone. Who's Kenny 11? Pickett may be gone. I don't know who's 11th. I don't know. Yeah. Washington. I think Philadelphia might be 11. Confusing. Yeah. You're right. I think Philadelphia is 11. That would be a good place for Malik Willis. Where? Philadelphia. They like Hurts. I know they do, but he's not good. They like Hurts, and they and I mean, I, I think they tried to trade for Russell Wilson, but yeah. Yeah. he wouldn't then, wave his no trade I'm clause. so happy they, they like Hurts. They don't Hurts then. They don't. If they were trying to get Wilson, they don't. Well, mm-hmm. there's a difference between going after Russell Wilson and going after a rookie quarterback like yeah. Willis. Do you think Jimmy G goes to Indy now? I th- well, I read today that the GM and the coach want um, a quarterback in place before OTAs, and apparently Jimmy G will not be ready before OTAs with uh, the shoulder surgery he okay. just had. So it makes sense. I hope they do get him because I, don't I think know where it's he a goes. perfect spot. Yeah, I, all the quarterback holes are filling up. I forgot to put this down. I mean, I know we're flying through. We have to fly through the NFL a little bit. Um, but... Kirk Cousins yeah. got it. Yes, Kirk Cousins. The amount of <laughs> oh, money I, I want to talk about this. The Go. amount of money this man has made in the NFL over two hundred and thirty million dollars. Good for Kirk. That's a man that knows how to conduct business, right there. Kirk Cousins is constantly disrespected on this show, sometimes yep. on Twitter, on other shows, always disrespected. Wait, wait, wait. Disrespected how though? That he's not good enough. This guy is good enough to win a Super Bowl on the right team. He is yeah, a the team very, is stacked around him. He is a very <laughs> solid quarterback. If you put him in the situation that Matt Stafford was just I was in, just about to say that. he <laughs> wins a Super Bowl just uh, like that. It, it, I feel very strongly about that. I agree. That. I definitely Stafford agree is that. better than Cousins. And, uh, I agree, His, but I also think he would have won a Super Bowl with that okay, team. Yeah. He always ha- puts up good stats. Cousins he, always does. He has but nice But it means numbers, nothing always. But... Yeah, yes, but, but it's not his fault. No, it's not. He, his he fault. hasn't had good defenses like ever. Not, not rarely. Ever. He's rarely. been on bad franchises. You know those teams yeah. that went to the 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 Vikings team that went to the um, conference championship game and got crushed by the Eagles. Yeah. If you put Kirk Cousins on, they that win the team, Super Bowl. They win the Super Bowl. So that was Chase Keenum, Super right? Yeah. Yeah. This is a. I know I got Giants fans cornering me, but the <laughs> would you compare Kirk Cousins to an Eli Manning in the sense that? If everything, be careful. I, I know, so I know. I, <laughs> if everything like breaks right around him, you have a good pass rush, good offensive line. You uh, come up with him. I wouldn't you win a Super Bowl with him. Yes. Yeah. 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 You can win a Super Bowl with Kirk Cousins. Can you win two? You can win a couple of them. You yeah. can't beat the sixteen and no Patriots, so you can't do that. Nah, do that. You, you can't also make great plays like that. Nobody can do that except my boy Eli. <laughs> <laughs> but Kirk Cousins does <laughs> sign a four forty million dollar extension. I mean, that's what mm. it is. One year, right? One year, and and for s- some reason this somehow lowers their cap number this year on him. That's why he's getting the money. <laughs> so I don't know what I don't know what math magician mm. came up with that, you know, who works for the NFL and the Vikings. But, yes, their, their cap number is lower. They have a little more money to spend. <laughs> and uh, Kirk and his new coach, uh, what's his name, O'Connell? Yeah. yeah. Kevin O'Connell from the Rams. He mm. is um, – they have a great relationship and uh, – 
off to a good start in Kirk's yeah. mind. Yeah. I know we got to get to baseball, but we brought up Jimmy G and we brought up Deshaun Watson. So yes. this past Those week. Those two options for you? Yeah. I mean, there was a report that Jimmy G and the Saints were like kind of tying together. And I was like, oh, mm. no. I, I got instantly depressed. <laughs> like, I don't <laughs> want this guy anywhere near. It's not that bad. No, because it's like. If you miss out on Watson, then it's not bad. It's like I'd be watching a worse Drew Brees, except less no accurate. No one's going to be Drew Brees for you, Josh. But no, nah, I, like I've watched it and I know Jimmy uh. G and I don't want that game manager type. I don't want that anywhere near my team. So I'm like, okay. All yeah. right. But I was asking myself, like, what better is out there, really? Like, Deshaun realistically. Watson, that's it. <laughs> this yeah, Sean Watson it. report comes out yesterday. And I'm like, huh? Maybe really? make a play at Jordan Love. That's the only thing. That's I what I was, like, of. leaning towards. He, he's not better than Jimmy G. No, he's not definitely yet. not better not than yet. Jimmy G right Have now. some sort of future yeah. in place. If uh, you want to win now, Jimmy G's better than Jordan nah. Love. Better than Jordan Love. I don't know. I'm just happy. I hope... Now I know I'm I'm gonna strictly talk about on the field with Deshaun Watson, mm-hmm. like as a quarterback. Yeah, that would be if you can somehow pair him without giving up M- Michael Thomas, Kamara. I mean, you're gonna have to give some important stuff up. You won't give. You might give Lattimore. We might have to. Yeah. I yeah. mean, depending. It's it's interesting because it also depends on not only on who's bidding more. Yeah. Like who has more to offer, but yeah. he has a no trade clause. He can pretty much choose. Between the Panthers and the Saints, where he wants to go. So and if the Saints make a good impression, and yeah. that's where he's uh, meeting. He's going to meet with them in the next uh, two days. The Panthers and the Saints. I don't know who gets them. I don't know what that's makes the most call. sense right now. I don't think it's going to be any of these teams. If I had to guess, I'd say, unfortunately, Josh, I think it's the Panthers. Their owner is crazy, David Tepper. He is a <laughs> very aggressive guy, and um, he will offer a lot if he likes what. Because you know, yes. Watson's almost doing an interview with them. Right. But they're also trying to get to know him too and what's going mm-hmm, on. Mm-hmm. So if David Tepper likes what he hears on, on you know in the next coming days, then this is gonna be a could be a match made in heaven over there in Carolina. Josh. What's up? They could trade my favorite Saint of all time, Traquan Smith. Traquan Smith. <laughs> I mean, you always ask name one Saint receiver. You can't. I just go Traquan Smith. That's all I got. Like, <laughs> He's good for four missed games, three hundred receiving yards. <laughs> A lot of uh, lost fantasy games for uh, if you're you, expecting him to do you, much. Why? Uh, why would you draft any Saints receiver? Yeah, really. <laughs> this past year was rough. I mean, book, man. we need a quarterback, but we also need a lot of receiver help. Yeah. They, they, That's the next And step. not much money yeah. to spend. This is how you know the Saints receiver were bad. All three of them were on the waiver wire. That's how, <laughs> that's how bad they were. <laughs> All right, let's um, let's get to baseball here. I'm so okay. excited to talk about this. You are listening to WHPC Sports Talk on the Voice of Nassau Community College, ninety point three WHPC. I am Michael Merlo, joined by Matt Leonard, Ross Levine, Joshua Mahi, and Elijah Blaine. So, breaking news coming out of Major League Baseball a couple of hours ago: Matt Olson of the Oakland A's has been traded to the Atlanta Braves. This affects both New York teams right here. The top two. Prospects in the Atlanta Braves system go to um, Oakland, who is going into a full rebuild rebuild mode. Uh, Christian Pache, um, he's their stud yeah. center fielder. He's unbelievable. He's in the deal. He heads to Oakland. But Matt Olson is a fantastic player. The Yankees were after him and um, unfortunately could not grab him up. They wanted too much from the Yankees, including uh, their top prospect, Anthony Volpe, shortstop, who the Yankees just do not want to give up. Do they uh, want Dominguez? No, I don't think they wanted Domingo. So they really? wanted Volpe, yeah. Wow. Volpe's going to be a stud. Uh, 516-572-7440. Yankee fans, let's talk. How do you feel right now? Are they going to get Freeman? Are they going to get Matt Ol- uh, How do you feel about them not getting Matt Olson? And Mets fans, <laughs> Matt Olson's a brave, and, and you <laughs> thought you're getting rid of Freddie Freeman, and, and, and he's not going back you there. Yeah, better younger Freddie Freeman to mm. deal with now. But now we got a guy that's probably a better power hitter than Freddie it's, Freeman. He's definitely uh, is a better Mets power didn't hitter. Do, to me, what I, and I and I think Steve Cohen's great, don't get me wrong, I was not in love when they said, well, we're satisfied with this lump. I was like, come on, we'll really? Get, we'll get to the Mets in I a agree. second. Because I, 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 we're obviously going to talk about the Mets, and I have a clip from Jacob DeGrom as well I want to play. <sighs> but Yankees for a second, right? They miss out on Olsen, and now they're kind of stuck. They don't have a first baseman. Well, they do, but it's Luke Voigt, and they don't feel great you know, about we him. Have, we have a first baseman. We have DJ LeMay. DJ LeMay, you can <laughs> play first base, but yeah. that's not ideal. And I think if they don't, may, Freddie Freeman is still available, and... 
again, he's not going back to Atlanta, which is a shocker to me. Even now, after the Dodgers were really pursuing him hard over the weekend, I understood that there was a chance he was going to leave, but I always thought Atlanta would come back, sneak in, and say, you know what, we're not letting our World Series MVP or our World Series champion go, right. you know, the MVP of our franchise for the last you know, almost decade. decade. We're not going to let him go. And they're going to let him go. He just doesn't have a home yet. And I'm shocked it happened before he signed out. Right. That's the yeah. that's the surprising thing about this. I, I really, I, it's more and more, I'm starting to think that Freeman's going to the Dodgers. So do I. I oh, really they're do. the last team standing here. He's not going to the Yankees. The Yankees are involved. No, they're involved, but like the Dodgers, like there's so much connections too. He's a yeah. hometown LA guy. There's also, I mean, that is a typical Dodgers thing to do: get another star in there. And I, I don't know. And they, I guess, they have a need. They have a need for a first base. I guess from the everything we've heard. The Yankees are still involved in these talks, but so are the Blue Jays, and so are the Tampa Bay Rays, and obviously the Dodgers are the favorites right now, so don't rule the Yankees out yet. They do have an offer in there for Freddie Freeman, but it looks like the Dodgers are the favorite, and you're right. They don't really have a need at first base. They just can do it. They have the ability to do it with Max Muncy, who can play second base. He's their first baseman. He's a fantastic player. He's just going to shift over to second base. And Freddie Freeman's going to play first, and they have a DH, and they'll be able to work things out. But the Dodgers lineup, if you go go look at the Dodgers lineup with Freddie Freeman, it's not... It's it's very scary to look at. It's not a pretty sight for other NFTs. What do they got there? Just... Betts, Bellinger, Bellinger, Betts, Bellinger, Justin Turner. Turner. Still. All right, we're all, we're all Sorry. going to go once. You go, Mike. <laughs> no, so if somebody wants to call it out, that's fine, but we're going to confuse people. We got mm-hmm. Betts, Freeman, Muncy, Bellinger, Bellinger, Justin Turner. Did I say Trey, Trey Turner? Turner? Trey Turner. Chris Taylor's Chris back. Yep. Oh, yeah. wow. Will Smith is, I think, oh, God. one of the three best offensive catchers in baseball. Yeah. Maybe one of the best catchers, period. Best catchers, period, 100%. <laughs> Oh my God! It, yeah. It's very scary. Wow! What this lineup's going to be able to do. And their pitching staff's good too. Yeah, they even bring with, back Kershaw even, back. Even without Scherzer, it's very good. Bauer's going to play. It looks like Bauer is probably going to play for the Dodgers. I hate Bauer, that so much. Euler, Urias, they're, yeah. they're loaded. And they have to bring well, back Kenley Jansen, but yeah. they're, they're still going to choke do somehow. Think, do you think Jansen and or, or aren't the Mets interested in Jansen or not? I don't think so. They're not. No. I don't. They're think rumored so. to be a good fit. I, I didn't hear they were talking to him. No, they're not talking to Jansen. Yeah. They, I don't. Unfortunately, I don't know if they. They're not gonna. They believe in oh. Edwin Diaz. <laughs> oh, <I don't>, they're <laughs> going terrible. with Edwin Diaz. Somebody got to. That's I can't wait. It's gonna be me. I how can't is, wait. How is it possible oh, <laughs> that we are sitting here less educated about running a franchise than the guys who actually run the franchise? Uh, don't we say don't that. believe in Edwin Diaz. Don't say that. We believe in Edwin Diaz. Uh, I, Edwin it, Diaz is gonna uh, watch. Edwin Diaz is gonna have a great year, and all you every year, okay. all you are down on. You Edwin believe Diaz. in him Look, all the time. I believe in Edwin be, Diaz. Eddie okay. Trumpet. Okay, do you, he'll be very good in April, May, and June. Will yeah. he be good in September and August? No. That's, that's what's going to happen. I wish I watched this video because I have a video, like tons <laughs> of videos of me dancing to Edwin Diaz, but I don't know if I'm cursing Look, or not I, in them, I, so I, I can't play it. Do we it have this song in there? Look. What is it called? Narcos. I'll look it up. I I'll, think we do. Like remember. the TV show? Yeah. Oh, I, okay. will, I, always, maybe narco, I don't know what's an S, but there's Narcos. This is what I will remember from Edwin Diaz. So this is what I will always remember from him. Like Timmy is, Trumpet? Well, that and also um, we have Salicata, what he said about oh. Edwin Diaz when he uh, watched them blow a game against the Washington Nationals. It was always uh, a <laughs> yeah. It was sugar. You got it? And it was, uh, yeah! <laughs> Talk over it, Ross. It was a uh, Diaz with... <laughs> <laughs> he play, He was like uh, sugar. We want to see more sugar. The worst. That's uh, I, <laughs> sugar is bad for you. Remember that, Ross. Yes. You know what my lasting <laughs> sugar gives you diabetes. Yes. You know what my lasting memory of Edwin Diaz will be. Oh, uh, which one? <laughs> Whenever he gives up a bomb yeah, and he just points up, the sky. Points yeah, pop up, that. pop up. Hansel Robles was big. Time. Oh, he was the <laughs> worst. <laughs> He would give up a 450-foot shot to dead center and point up in the air. Yeah. Like, what the hell are you going to do about it? <laughs> it's completely over every fence possible in the stadium. Imagine being the center fielder and you're seeing it and then you're seeing the ball out. at the same time I, flying I just, over. I would give him the middle finger if he looked back and went like this. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I would do. Oh, yeah. How, how, how about Jerry Familia, by the way? Speaking of bad Mets closers. <laughs> yeah, Jerry Familia is heading over to uh, Philadelphia. <laughs> this guy, I'm telling you right now, he will become Mariano Rivera over there really? against us. I'm telling you right now. I don't know. I see. Nope, you're right. I see no. at yeah. least 10 saves against us. 
Well, I, that's maybe, the Mets' fault because they put him in this bad situation. <laughs> he is going to play very well for What them. about Shorter if he goes there, too? He's going to turn into Barry Bonds? And I, and I, and I, and I don't want <laughs> that. Yes. I real, I'm real. i very afraid of that happening. I talked to Matt about this a few days ago. Remember when Daniel Murphy left for the Nationals yeah. and he turned into Ted Williams all of a sudden? <laughs> like, this is what happens. He hit 400 for like three I, months. I, yeah, that was I'm crazy. Not, I'll be honest. I'm not worried about Familia going to the Phillies. That, that's, a, that's a typical Phillies thing to do. Mm-hmm. They have more wild pitchers. Let's get another wild yeah, pitcher. You know what? And what's, another one. What's really funny is you have, uh, you have Familia over there. There, right in yes. Philadelphia, and and you have Jose Alvarado still. Yes. They're like the righty lefty, like they're the same thing, just righty lefty, yeah, wild, throw hard, or is either gonna lo- be lights out, you know, one, or two, three, three inning, guys. or hit three guys, walk the ballpark, and completely yes. blow the game. But isn't <laughs> but that just doesn't familiar just add to that toll of? Oh yeah, guys. no, hundred mm-hmm. percent. You're gonna have, and I was listening to Philadelphia radio today. They are going to both of them are just gonna. Either bre- they're gonna break your heart so many times yes. to be like, yeah. well, the good might be worth it. Uh, well, yeah, no, I'm and look, they also brought in Brad Hand. I call him Brad Leg, but he's Brad Hand. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's just what I call him. And and look, he's another guy that's you know just not great anymore. Just not. No, he 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 pitched pretty well for the Mets at the end of the year last year, but that yeah. was after a disastrous tenure um, yeah. for a month with I, uh, Toronto. I, I, and also remember, he really. Pushed the the Nats' hand into blowing the whole thing up. He blew saves for yep. them, and they would have. I'm not saying they would have bought, but they just blew it up once he blew those saves. Yeah, he was not good at Washington uh, toward the end, and then yeah. he wasn't good with Toronto. And but he came to the Mets, and he was pretty good, and he you know parlayed that into six million dollars for um, the one year with Philadelphia. So the yeah. Phillies, you know, needed to make improvements in the bullpen. I don't know if they made improvements, but they got arms. Yeah. So I think that's all you could ask for. The Yankees mm-hmm. made a big time trade last night. Mm-hmm. They acquired Josh Donaldson and his twenty five million dollars for the next two years. Um, it's a total of fifty one million dollars. <laughs> Isaiah <laughs> Kiner Falefa, shortstop, um, who was traded <laughs> from the Rangers to the Twins and now to the Twins to the Yankees and uh, a catcher for Gio Rochella and Gary Sanchez, they are gone, Yankee fans. They are I, gone. I'm okay with I'm just gonna say was I'm okay with Sanchez being gone. Yes. That's fine. Urshela, no. Don't I, I tell me you like don't I liked tell me Urshela. you're hard I liked him. by Urshela yeah. leaving. I, I liked him though. He was a good young guy. Everyone was, likes Urshela, you can like him, but, but you gotta be okay with him leaving. Yeah. Like, he's not I know, great I'm okay enough to keep with around. him leaving, but he was like he was a fan favorite. People loved him. Yeah, that like, that I get. That I get. He was kind of the odd man out in this situation though, because he was like Playing really well when we expected Andujar to be our um, permanent permanent third baseman, and now yeah. we got Donaldson to replace him. It's Gio a sh- lot of money for thirty six year old. Yeah, I, Listen, I don't love it. Josh Donaldson, twenty five million dollars for the next two seasons is not what you like to see. No, he's a good, solid offensive player, but he hasn't been healthy, and he's an older guy, like you guys said. So that I have some issues with. I have some reservations. I think twenty five million dollars could have been. Put to and good use elsewhere. Giving to Freddie Freeman. But Gio Urshela, I'm not I'm not going crazy that yeah. he left. He's yeah. an average to below average offensive player. What? He was most likely going to be playing out of position at shortstop uh, this no, I year. I agree. I just, again, I look at it from the standpoint that the, the Yankees already have so many home run hairs in their lineup. Why are you adding another? Like, why do you need more of that? And, like, he's not, he's a, what is he, a 240 hitter as of late the last couple of years? I know he had that one year won the MVP. But he, we don't oh, really care about batting, batting average, average anymore. Well, batting average isn't, you know, the biggest thing to worry about. He hit you 35 bombs. His OPS is been in the 800s for, I think, I think his OPS plus is 127 for the last three he's seasons. He's a solid player. He's a good player. He's, he's a, a really player. good offensive player. But he's not worth 25 million. He's not, I, listen, Elijah, I agree, I agree yeah. with you. I, I, w- I don't know if I would have made this trade. And the thing about this trade was it was so confusing, but you felt like, okay, there's something else coming, right? Mm. Because you have, you know, six guys in the infield right now for four spots. So you were expecting a big move to and be made. Donaldson with that, yeah. And no, after this, oh. after this trade, and I kind of felt like it was going to be, you know, to Matt Olson and the A's. But that's obviously not happening now, and I don't know where this next move comes from. Is it going and get another starter? I don't know what other needs this team has on offense other than, you know, I mean, shortstop they feel like they have fixed with Isaiah Kiner-Falefa, but first base, and I don't think they're going to get Freeman. They're obviously not making a big trade for a first baseman. What are you going to do with all these infielders? 
Yeah, I mean, now you're kind of out on... Well, they don't have a choice. So they would try to make a trade for Matt Olson. That didn't work. Um, and, look, Freddie Freeman, I guess there's still a chance. But, um, look, they, they could definitely use some help with the starters. Um, Zach Britton's going to be out um, a little bit more. I use think he's put on the 60 DIL. Use another reliever, sure. But you're going to trade one of these guys for a reliever? No, but like you do, there are some holes a little bit in that's in the starters and a little bit in the relievers. The two biggest holes for me are first baseman and catcher. Right now, I don't think Higgy is a full time catcher for us. Well, I they're like gonna, him. this kid that they traded for. He's, well, they're going to have to try to duke it out. But that's really it. His OPS plus was below like 100. It was like 70 something. It was he not had, great. He had some power. Ikashio had a little bit of pop. No, last I'm talking year. about um the guy we traded for, Ben. Oh. Yeah, Something, I have no yeah. idea. No clue. No uh, clue. I don't like, know who this guy is they got. I have I, no idea. Apparently he's just clue. jacked. That's his thing. He's jacked. He's just, but, okay. Um, I mean, if you got there a few days earlier, you could have gotten maybe Garver out of it. Yeah, Garver. Got late. I mean, I, ben, that was... Rover. Rover. Ro- Rodverod. Yeah, yeah Rover I, I'm not. I'm not saying. I can't I'm just pronounce saying ben. it. He's jacked. The Yankees like him. I'm sure the analytical people like him. He's a younger guy, so I mean, he's apparently fantastic yeah. defensively. So you're going to see, you know, what platoon of Kyle Gashioka and this kid Ben, whatever. This guy Ben, <laughs> and <laughs> that's going to be that's going to be your catching situation. Yeah, that, that's I what mean, it's going to be. I know, I know, and it, it, look, it's not the. I think the offense is kind of similar to last season. It's similar. It's not superior, better than what it was 24 hours ago, and it's not like superior work. I think it's superior. I think it's. I think it's much better. I, I don't improve? know. It's, it's. I think it's much better. How much better though? I think Gio Urshela and Isaiah kind of Falefa are basically on the same level offensively, mm. and I think that Josh Donaldson is just so much better. Yeah, he's a plus on the offense. He's a plus on offense. He's better than everybody in the deal. So you got the best player in the deal. I don't think losing Gary Sanchez is a, is, is a big no. issue. No. Um, I think the, overall as a team, they're better, especially Isaiah Carter falefa is going to hit 270. His OPS, I mean, me and Elijah were talking earlier today, you know, you expect, you know, playing in Yankee Stadium, maybe he'll be a little bit better offensively. Yeah, I was talking about it with, like, uh, Didi Gregorius. So That's a comp, really. If he can get his OPS into the 700s, he's hitting 280, he steals bases, and he's fantastic defensively, mm. you may have found yourself a nice little shortstop for the year. He's a utility guy, right? Yeah. Eventually, I, he will be when they bring v- uh, Lopey up. Yeah, yeah, I mean... Th- th- Isaiah Kiner Falefa is a super utility on a World Series championship team. That's how I see him. Um, but the thing is, if we bring in Rizzo, I do not like that as a first base option. Who? Rizzo as a first base I option. Think, I think that's what it's going to be at this it's, point. It's going to have to be. He's old. Tim Ravoit. Two reasons. One, he's old. Uh, actually, three reasons. Two, he strikes out a lot. And three, he cannot play in Toronto. Unfortunately... Elijah, they don't care about guys striking out a lot. Yeah, I, I know they don't, they don't they care. They really but don't I, care. But, at, like, we have Gallo, we have Judge, and we have Stanton. When they're on, they're really good. But when they're off, they strike out a lot. We have a lot of strikeout guys. I know it's not a problem in, like, 2022 baseball. But for me, it just doesn't work. Yeah. I mean, I, mean, I agree. Yeah. I'm more of a like an on base percentage, high on base percentage kind of guy. Yeah. And if the problem of having a lot of streaky players, yeah. it's great when they're going all good, but when they all suck, yeah, for an extended period of time, like that could I mean, really I, you hope the cost streaks, you. You hope the streaks are like you split know, up a little bit, spaced out. And yeah. You can't predict that. That's why baseball is so difficult. Our to predict. contact guy was not great last year. Uh, well, DJ LeMayhew, right? And DJ LeMayhew is going to be a massive key to this season. Yes. If he's better, then the team is going to be better because he he was a guy that finished top three in MVP voting. For yeah. the, you know, before oh, yeah. last year, you know, his first two years with the Yankees. So that's a guy you need to get going. That was one of the main reasons why the offense never got going. But how last old? Year. How old is DJ LeMayhew? He's older. Was he 33, 34 years Gotta old? Gotta be now. You see, that's the problem. You don't get. I mean, and you gave him a five year. You gave him a five year contract. And a, look, and there's exceptions. Obviously, there's exceptions. Some some guys get older, they get a little bit better. 
that doesn't happen very often. It's very far and few between. The good uh, news for him is he's a contact guy. He's never much of a power guy, and that can age well. But it the could. thing is, it didn't age well yet last year. I mean, it could he could have had a bad year. Give him another shot. He's no, a very I'm not good contact up on hitter. Him. I'm just, I'm just worried a little about the age. I'm not giving yeah. up on him. I think he's gonna be better. I just, I, I think, I think he'll, he'll hit 300. He'll be fine. Yeah. Not the batting average matters much, but. To, to the fan that it does matter to it. Yeah, for, if you're a contact guy, I think it matters more. Thank yeah. Um, um, like, you're not like Gallo or something like that. <laughs> what, what's his uh, bad hip? Batting bad average on Paul's in play. Um, uh, LeMahieu or Gallo? LeMahieu. Let me see. That's we the one need, that matters, apparently. We don't they, need to. No, we're not, I'm not doing They showed like, <laughs> a Twitter account of like LeMahieu, like, uh, like, yeah, ground ball to shortstop. That's what he did all yeah, the time. Yeah, he was a ground year. out last year. Mr. Double play. Yeah. Yeah, it was bad. It was like, I thought it was like the yips or something he had, it, just it, grounding out into it, double plays. Everybody we're gonna, grounded to double plays a we're lot. Find, a lot of it was him, though, a lot. We're going to find out a lot about what the Yankees are going to do, I think, in the next 24 hours with the Freeman thing. You know, with Freeman's um, decision comes soon. We're, we're really going to figure out where the Yankees are going to go. Um, I do want to talk about the Mets, though, and uh, this is Jacob. DeGrom earlier today um, he was asked a question about his opt-out and his contract coming up this year. Jake, uh, S- Steve Cohen said yesterday it, it seems like he wants to let the season play out with you. You have the opt-out and the contract. Does that sound like a good plan to you? To Yeah, you know, that's uh, that's the plan. Um, you know, I won't take any more on this, but that's the business side of baseball. And as a player, you build in opt-outs and um, that's the business side of it. But for me, I don't want that to be any distraction. Like I said, I'm excited about this team, and I've said it before, love being a Met. I think it would be really cool to be one for my entire career, but um, you know, the plan is to um, exercise that option and, and be in constant contact in the offseason with the Mets and, and St- uh, Steve Cohen in the front office. And what did you think of the contract Scherzer got? And is that something? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, for? it's exciting. You know, like I said, to see what ownership's doing and and going and getting guys. This is going to be an exciting place to be. So that is Jacob Degrom discussing his contract situation, which he's going to opt out of his his contract at the end of this year, and, and as he should, considering the money that Max Scherzer just got paid. Right. And it's great to hear from Jacob Degrom. Um, he had said um, during the press conference, and I mean from the way he looked today, um, he is fully healthy. Completely healthy. Yes. And he's been told from his, the doctors that his um, UCL is perfectly intact. It's perfect. So, and he says he feels great. He's been throwing off a mound for you know about five. I think he's had. I think he said he's had about five to six bullpen sessions. He's been normal spring training workout, winter workout. So everything looks good for the Mets ace and. Buck Walter said today he will start opening day in Washington, D.C. Nice. I cannot wait. I will be there for the first two games oh, in lucky Washington, you. D.C. I'm super, super excited. Uh, Max Scherzer's first start in Washington. Whoa. That is fantastic. Uh, Mariners just, are trading yep. for... Um, yeah. That's what I was showing Mike just now. Yeah. So that uh, we'll get to that in one second um, because I do want to talk about the Mets. I mean, the Mariners, trading, the Mariners are trading for... Um, Jesse Winker. Uh, Teddy Bridgewater All-Star. also just signed a contract. Oh, Teddy Bridgewater. <laughs> <laughs> with, with the Dolphins. <laughs> if that matters for anything. He is the <laughs> ultimate bridge quarterback. Yeah. Bridge. Yeah. Yes. Uh, the Mariners, yeah, so they're trading for All-Star outfielder Jesse Winker from the Reds. When he's healthy, he's a very good player. So yeah. um, that, that's a big get for them and probably saves them some money. Mm. <laughs> they don't want to spend, and they're very cheap over there. They did spend on Robbie Ray. I shouldn't say that. but They spent on Robbie Cano. Now he's our problem. Back to uh, the Mets. Uh I think it's just great news. DeGrom is okay and ready to go. He says he expects to make, you know, 30 plus starts. Him opting out, I don't think it's a big deal at all. I don't think it should come as any surprise to anybody. And I actually don't think um, people are making such a big deal about it on Twitter because it's it's expected. He, I mean, I think he could opt mm-hmm. in for $33 million. He could make $45 million for the next three seasons if yeah. he opts out. And of course, Steve Cohen will bring him back. No, no issues there. The end of that little video uh, clip um, where they're asking him about Scherzer's, Scherzer's contract, yeah. that is classic New York media like baiting. Oh, yeah. They're trying to like get him, that, get that quote. Like, hey, Listen, your teammate makes more money yeah. than you, and we think you're better than him. What it's, do you have to say about that? <laughs> it is exactly fantastic that the media is back allowed in the clubhouses, and there's no more yep. Zoom. Oh, my God. It sucked. And now uh, all the broadcast booths, uh, SMY, yes, WFAN, um, whatever, uh, WOR, whoever, whatever the Mets are on. Mm. WCBS, I mean, sorry. The time. WCBS are on. Uh, it was WOR for years. 
they're going to be traveling to the games to call them. Nice! was the stupidest yeah. thing awesome. they weren't allowed last year, even if you were vaccinated. So but John Sterling won't get that uh, home run call. Again. <laughs> yes, no, he won't. He will be in the stadium, thankfully. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I forgot about that. That was insane. That was, yeah. That Base- way off. Baseball is seriously back, but a serious incident happened over the weekend with Pete mm-hmm. Alonso, who um, was in a serious car accident in which his... Um, car flipped over three times and there's video going around now on social media of his car completely destroyed thankfully everybody in the car was okay including Pete um, he was just talking about how he's so thankful to be there and mm. you know just giving inspirational quotes as Pete does uh, Buck <laughs> Walter said he spoke to the team about it you know today that's why he was late to camp he was supposed to be there yesterday and he showed up today so thankfully everybody's okay though uh, Pete says he'll resume normal activities tomorrow somehow I don't know yeah, how that happens. That was a uh, when this news hit my uh, my timeline, my heart stopped. And then the the tweet that I read it said it flipped over three times his car, yeah. and he feels fortunate to be alive. And then my mind immediately goes to okay, what injuries did he suffer? Yeah, is he going to start yeah. the season? Yeah, and he <laughs> just showed up. He just showed up. <laughs> hey, I'm here. He just What's walked up? right in. He's like, oh, I'll be back to the field tomorrow. Donnie like, Steven- huh? Donnie Stevenson saved it from the crash. Uh, <laughs> uh, Jesse Winko, Jesse Winko, Jesse Winker, and um, I can't pronounce Suarez's name. Eugenio. Eugenio Suarez, third baseman. Uh, <laughs> Wait, Suarez third went baseman. too? Yeah, Suarez is going to the wow. Seattle as well. So a big-time mm. trade, and former Mets prospect Justin Dunn is in the trade going mm. back to um, wow. Cincinnati. So a big-time trade here in Major League Baseball, wanna, Jesse Winker They want to make a um, run at it. Yeah. They won they 90 games last run. year. They're going to scare me this year. Yeah. They won 90 games, and they added Robbie Ray. So that's a big move for the and, Seattle Mariners. Yeah, that that's a big move. The Mariners, I th- I could see them being a wild card team for sure. Yeah, you know, you got I, another They might take the division, team. to be honest. I yeah. think they oh. are. You sure? We're uh, going to get to it in a minute, but I think right. Carlos Correa is going back there. Yeah. I, I, I Even really with do. Correa, I have faith in the Mariners. Oh, no. Come on. Okay. The Astros are loaded. Yeah, look look at their so pitching loaded. staff. Look at their starting pitching. Who? The Astros. It's not so, good. What's so special about the Mariners? You don't know what you're getting out of Verlander if you're the Astros. You don't okay, know. You're 39. You don't know Tommy you. John. Uh, I was, Robbie Ray just won a Cy Young Award. Bad. Okay, and I mm. think he's going to take a step back, but okay. Step back this young season is still pretty good. Yes. It's not, no, it's, you're it's right. not be I, bad. I don't think he's going to be a legit bona fide number one ace, but I believe that he's going to be a solid starting pitcher. I, th- I think they're going to be one of those teams that add somebody at the deadline, big starting pitcher, and they'll go really far. That's fine. I th- I think they could compete for a, um, a postseason spot. They're, I, they're I, making it with 12 teams. They're making it. I mm. would not say they are ahead of the Astros yet. I, I'm I not saying that. There. I'm saying they have a chance to make a run of the division. Oh, I'm not predicting them to win. Speaking of the yeah. American League West, I mean, we are really flying through. This is when we need like a two-hour commercial break show. I know. Like this is where we need it. We oh, are. I have something to say at the end. Remind L- me. Yes. Um, Chris Bassett. I, you know what? I, I keep Bassett saying um, yeah. and I told myself yesterday I don't want to say um anymore. Well, I don't know how many times it. I've said it. <laughs> it's like I don't know. It's just like a reaction. But anyway, Chris Bassett, a New York Met. The New York Mets made a trade for two. Um, minor league pitchers on Saturday night to add Chris Bassett. He was an all-star last year. He was having a fantastic season until he got hit with a line drive in the face. Uh, I was him? After the mm. all-star break. And um, he ended up coming back and making a couple of starts yeah. at the end. It was fantastic in those. But this is a big-time get for the Mets. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is a very good pitcher. A guy that's older, 33 years old, but doesn't have many innings on that arm. So he's a up, high upside yeah. guy and is a number three starter. In this rotation, it is really unbelievable. And the Mets, I think, may have one of the best rotations in baseball on paper right now. Probably the deepest uh, I was going to say, look at the too. pitching depth. Like, like McGill's, what, seven now? Yeah. He was, was three at times last year. He's seven now. And that now. could be the most important part about all this. The Mets have depth, and I put in all caps on my sheet here, depth. Jordan mm-hmm. Yamamoto, yeah. David Peterson, <laughs> Yamamoto, Trevor Williams. If Carlos Carrasco can return back to Car- form. Well, Carlos Carrasco is going to be the five. I'm talking about guys not five? in the rotation. Yeah, or four. four. Or Taiwan Walker Walker's might be the five. five. Yeah. Would, would you five. try and trade Carrasco in a deal to get a better pitcher? No. I, no? You keep I Carrasco? I, I would try and flip him. What are you going to get him? Yeah. What, what are you gonna I, get? I'm not saying he's the main centerpiece of the deal. I'm saying you need to offset some money, trade I, for a better pitcher, and include Carrasco in he, that deal. I really don't think he was as bad as he showed. I think it's because he just came off the injury. He came off the injury, and then he had something in his elbow, which they took care of yeah. over over the uh, offseason. I'm just not a big yeah. fan of his right now. No. After last year, I'm not a big fan of his. He wasn't good with the Mets. I think we should give him another chance. This is a professional pitcher who hasn't really been bad other than this huh. season with the Mets. 
Yeah. Just the uh, sports news is flying what by. Happened? Um, J.C. Jackson signed with the Chargers. Yeah. Oh, that oh. is Duran yeah. Duran James tweeted out eyes emoji. So huh. that like is oh huge. my god. J.C. Jackson is probably the best. Co- he's definitely the best. He's corner. the best defensive free agent out there right now. Is he the best defensive free agent? He's out the only all pro. He's up there. Current he's, all pro. Well, him and Devondre Campbell. Devondre I just, Campbell's gone. I just want to say this about J.C. Jackson. He was fantastic with mm. the Patriots. I hope this isn't another situation with like Malcolm Butler leaving. Yeah. Because listen, I understand the Patriots don't pay many players, but J.C. Jackson coming from New England, an undrafted guy, Bill Belichick feels as though he made him. He put him in the right situations, and he made him the player that he was. I hope for the Chargers, this is going to be a big money deal. I really hope that this isn't a situation where he goes to another team and in a different system and he gets exposed a little bit mm-hmm. not being in New England. This on paper looks great and the Chargers are having a fantastic offseason. They had Khalil Mack. They had J.C. Jackson a defense that needed work and they're getting it because their offense is all world with their all world quarterback. So I, this is huge. They're doing exactly what you should do when your star rookie quarterback is on a rookie deal. Yep. Mm. Go for it. Get big money guys. If it doesn't work out fine, when you have to give Herbert the extension, though, then your window kind of shortens a little bit. But they're doing exactly what you should do. Mm-hmm. I mean, the, the only thing that's holding this team back is really their head coach, in my opinion. I think if they Agreed. had a better head coach, they'd be Super Bowl favorites, honestly. This is um this this trade is kind of just embarrassing. What the, for the Mariners for the Cincinnati Reds, man. They, I understand their owner isn't yeah. as wealthy, but you know what? This is clearly what they clearly about money. And it's not that they, you know, it's not that they didn't get much back. I don't know the prospects that well. All I know is Justin Dunn, and he was pitching in the majors, and he wasn't mm-hmm. too bad last season. But it just really is disgusting that teams will just completely shed salary like this. Oh. You know, they trade Sonny Gray. They had mm-hmm. players, Ross. They yeah. had good players yeah, on this have. team. And yeah. if they would have went the extra mile and spent I a think- little more money... They could have been contenders, and I, I'm not Absolutely. talking about this season. I'm talking yeah, about sh- going back to last off season yeah, as well. Especially, you know, in that park, they really care about their baseball. In Cincinnati. Yeah, it's not a great look for them. But again, this is what happens when uh, you're not wealthy and stuff like that. I mean, don't they should have spent a little bit more anyway? Yeah. Um, so oh, sorry to cut you off. Mike. No, you go, and I just want to bring something out. Mm-hmm. Bring something else up very quickly. Not really quick. It's just situations like this. When I hear about small market teams crying about, oh, we can't compete with the guys like the Mets and the Dodgers spending money, and then you do stuff like this, it's yeah. kind of come on now. You make yourself look bad. Yeah, you're just making yourself look even worse. Uh, Fernando Tatis is has a broken wrist. He's going to miss several mm-hmm. months of the season. Very sad news. I read this on Twitter. Um, so nobody really knew how this injury came. I think we now found out. Um, probably not a great. This is from Jesse Rogers on ESPN. Probably not a great thing when Fernando Tatis was asked when his motorcycle accident happened. He responded with, "Which one?" Um, <laughs> Yo. So apparently, Fernando. this injury came during the off season during a motorcycle accident. He says he heard it, but he was not allowed. I think December around there. He wasn't allowed to speak to team officials though because the lockout. Um, he went to another doctor. Um, he said he saw something, but nothing of major concern when he started swinging a bat. The wrist is broken, so that's several months, and this is going to be something to keep an eye on very quickly. That, that was a mistake of a contract, in my opinion. I do not think so. We can debate that yeah. another day. Last thing. happy spe- Special happy birthday to Sean Novak today. He's okay. 40th <laughs> today. So. Today's Sean's birthday? Yeah. <laughs> why is he in? <laughs> How old is he turning? He's 40th <laughs> today. <laughs> What is he? I don't know. That's why I said you that. Don't say I, I don't want to say. I don't want to. I don't want to call him old. <laughs> Happy birthday, Sean! Happy birthday to Sean! Happy birthday, Sean! That's why he's out today. Happy birthday, Sean! Five years, eighty-two and a half million dollars for J.C. For Jackson Sean? to the <laughs> Chargers. <birthday>? Sean wishes. <laughs> oh, I, have, I have absolutely nothing loaded in here, guys. Oh, so we're you gonna did have Josh to keep, on Friday. Oh, we're yeah. gonna have to keep speaking for a minute. I'm very sorry. <laughs> But, um, you broke one of my like six rules that I have. Well, I played the Jacob Degrom thing, and now I just I'm all just, I'm all just get sorts. get everything loaded up. You got it. We'll keep talking. I got to keep talking. Sing happy birthday talking. to Sean. Happy no, 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 no. We're not doing that. <laughs> we are good. Thanks for listening to WHPC Sports Talk for Matt Leonard, Ross Levine, Joshua Yamahi, and Elijah Blaine. I am Michael Merlo here on the Voice of Nassau Community College, ninety point three WHPC.